Metley and Blue most definitely does uplift and help with that MAO inhibition, which keeps serotonin longer in my brain, alongside dopamine as well. So I definitely see the neurotransmitter benefits alongside the oxygenation benefits on the mitochondria. Uh, Dean, you uh, went a little bit ham on uh, Instagram uh, about uh, the nitric oxide inhibiting effects of uh, methylene blue uh, because people always <laughs> like to bring that up, right? You and me, we like methylene blue. And then, yeah, but it's a nitric oxide synthase inhibitor, Steve, and it diminishes the pump. Now, forget the one hour deep dive that I made. And the first topic I addressed in the beginning was um, that it's kind of fake news. Right? It only happens at higher dosages. Um, did you uh, suffer any repercussions from this uh, commonly reported side effect that only happens when you make a dose of methylene blue, Dean? <laughs> I'm sure you get tired of answering th- this I, question also. Uh, well, I, I think if you're to look back at my pictures on last year's prep taking methylene blue forever long, uh, five five months or thereabouts, um, I think my vascularity on the surface of my skin looked uh, pretty okay. And I was even taking methylene blue right up to peak week. I think... When people well, like uh, cherry pick statements like this, and I'm going to be quite harsh because uh, when we view a nitric Go oxide inhibitor, um, first and foremost, what are you talking about? You know, science, making a statement in science has to be quite specific. So if you're saying, oh, it's a nitric oxide inhibitor, well, what is a form of nitric oxide synthase? Is it inhibiting? Is it INOS? Is it ENOS? Is it ENOS? If it's ENOS, endothelial nitric oxide synthase, which is what creates nitric oxide in your bloodstream, that phasodilates your bloodstream, then yeah, that's going to inhibit NO's positive impact on vasodilation and blood flow and vascularity and whatever else. But if it's inhibiting INOS, which is inducible nitric oxide synthase, which is what your body makes as an pro-oxidant so no in your body is an actual oxidant it can create nitrites and nitrates so there's when we view nitric oxide it's not this harmless thing that creates a pump it's a very important cell signaling molecule that yeah helps with vasodilation but it is also a a cell signaling molecule that can indicate that there's a serious infection in the body that's one thing so quite often um sepsis being one of the main medical ways that methylene blue is quite often used um high doses of methylene blue is sort of like a a one shot in the dark that person's probably going to die with sepsis you know not to be harsh but it's a very difficult thing to treat in an emergency you basically have a lot of um final strategies of is it going to really hurt the person anymore if i intervene with this strategy or what is my potential positive possibility or probability of improving the outcome of the patient living and they quite often give a very high dose of methylene blue as a nitric oxide inhibitor to reduce INOS expression to try and save cells from being destroyed because of this massive flood of nitric oxide so when we look at the science yes high dose methylene blue will lower nitric oxide but it's from INOS if anything, the research actually says it has a positive impact on upregulating ENOS, which is what creates nitric oxide in your arteries for vasodilation. So if we're going to cherry pick, the statement is correct. It is a nitric oxide <laughs> inhibitor, but it's of ENOS and INOS as opposed to ENOS. So, you know, for when we're, when we're rediscussing science and we're going to cherry pick, cherry pick correctly, um, that has some be- positive benefits to enos and i guess the other comment that i was often asked was what about staining of your organs from high dose methylene blue um to my knowledge uh, that will only occur with high dose iv as well and if you imagine you're putting a synthetic yeah. blue dye straight into your bloodstream that within minutes reaches probably every organ of your body um so yeah, it's more than likely going to stain some of your cells blue because that's what it was designed to do, was a microscope stain. Now, if you put a big massive dose straight into your bloodstream and you die and you do an autopsy, well, I wouldn't be surprised if they found blue cells in your heart or your liver or your kidneys. 
Um, I think taking it so orally. So you see that in the malaria. Think, yeah. I don't think you're going to experience cell staining with a five milligram dose ingested orally. Um, to be honest, could be wrong, but every incidence, and there is only probably two or three when you search through the scientific literature of organ staining from it, and it is from high dose IV. Yeah. And in, in the cases of malaria and sepsis, the dose just increase upwards from one milligram per kilogram of body weight by intravenous injection daily for multiple days in duration. So that could be 700 milligrams if you're a 100 kilogram bodybuilder, intravenous for several days. Uh, most of the time it's like two milligrams for one kilogram of body weight. So that's already 200 milligrams. So who in their right mind is going to take 200 milligrams intravenously? Uh, unless you have experience with intravenous administrations. And even for priapism, right, with a prolonged erection caused by uh, Viagra or Cialis or uh, Levitra, then the injection protocol is 50 milligrams intracovernosously to directly into the penis. And then it inhibits nitric oxide production and allows for normal um, blood removal from the penis yep. in combination with epinephrine. Yeah, literal which blue is also yeah, yeah, exactly. You're literally get blue balls. So, but that's in combination methylene blue at a high dose, 50 milligrams into the penis with epinephrine, um, right? A, a, to, to cause vasoconstriction, allowing for blood to kind of diffuse out of the penis. So as long as you're not IVing anything over 50 milligrams or injecting that locally, I, I, I think the only way it would diminish the pump and cause nitric oxide inhibition is if you start doing that pre-workout, 25 milligrams bilaterally into the biceps, and then, then you might get a diminished effect. But all these guys that that they want, don't want to take methylene blue because they might not get an erection or a pump in the gym. Man, it's it's an overreaction. Yeah, and it's, the pump uh, the pump doesn't contribute to growth, so I wouldn't obsess about the pump. Yeah. Anymore. <laughs> besides the fact, besides that, the fact, the pump is pretty useless. Um, yeah, it's yeah, pleasurable, and, I, and no one should inject anything into their penis. Uh, well, maybe try mix. <laughs> <laughs> Papiferine and uh, <laughs> hey, works, man. Allegedly, not allegedly for personally. Yeah, not talking from personal experience. <laughs> mm. So it's funny that these things we have to deal with. Like I addressed it in the methylene blue deep dive, but I got I think like a thousand new or two thousand new sub subscribers from that. It's very <laughs> popular this compound. Yeah, because um, RFK was taking it in the airplane mm -hmm. and then it goes viral, right? Um, so I got a lot of new subscribers. And then even though I addressed it right at the start of the video, people were immediately in the comment section, it inhibits nitric oxide synthase. I'm like, dude, take a fucking Cialis and shut the fuck up, right? It, it increases cyclic guanosine monophosphate downstream, and then you, you mitigate any kind of deleterious effect on the methylene blue. But yeah, this is the stuff we have to deal with as educators. So, oh my God. Yeah, I'm I talking mean, about things even... we have to deal with. Uh, yeah, so Dean, you want to interject a little bit more? <laughs> I thought I had a no, segue. No, I was just going to say, even, <laughs> even, even with the, the whole nitrate thing, um, I guess we we just have to, like I said, just be a little more careful in how we spread rumors, if you want to put it that way, or incorrect information. And probably at the close of it, probably the worst thing, I guess, that is warranted to have a discussion with methylene blue to sort of close the section is the, the effect on neurotransmission. That's probably a more uh, important side effect to discuss than just going around throwing that, oh, it's a nitric oxide inhibitor. Yeah, because the drug interactions through Maui inhibition and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, that's a little bit more worrisome. I mean, I got full-blown serotonin syndrome combining vortioxetine with methylene blue, both at like entry-level doses, luckily only one day, um, and then combining fluvoxamine at a, at a moderate dose with a, a moderate dose of methylene blue, that seems to be acceptable, right? Now, will I get long-lasting serotonin syndrome-like side effects? That remains to be seen, but uh, so far I'm good combining 50 milligrams fluvoxamine with up to 10 milligrams methylene blue, but some people don't respond well to that. So I highlighted that in the deep dive also because there's a lot of people on SSRIs or antidepressants in general, which modulates serotonin and dopamine levels in the brain. And then you have all these dopaminergic drugs like Adderall and Tesofensine yeah. and 
you know, <laughs> 9 MEBC and whatnot, nootropic, uh, XYZ. So all these drug interactions people need to worry about, or think about when they start adding in methylene blue, because I think methylene blue and warfarin have the most amount of drug interactions I've ever researched um, comparatively to all the other stuff that we take. Like if you take testosterone, okay, drug interactions, caffeine, uh, aromatase inhibitors, that's about it. And uh, the rest is all synergistic, but but methylene blue, warfarin, and a couple of these, uh, or metformin, a, a lot of drug interactions. But it's also because these compounds have been extensively studied um, compared to other medications that we take. So yeah, the, these things are, you know, God forbid people do a little bit additional research. Like I couldn't <laughs> possibly cover everything in the deep dive. And, you know, and then even in my deep dive, I forgot a couple of things. So I'm going to make a part two about methylene blue, um, maybe a month from now. Because there's a lot more to discuss, but yeah, you, you're right, Dean. It's the the interactions with you know uh, Maui inhibition and and serotonergic, dopaminergic, and epinephrine or yeah, epinephrinergic. <laughs> if that's even correct, like that's that's something that's concerning. Yeah, especially if you stack higher doses together. Like, did you experience anything serotonergic side effects, Dean? No, right? Because you you don't take no. SSRI. No, no, and I, I guess I, if anything, I probably benefited even more positively with my own polymorphism. I've got, you know, MAOA++, which is a very fast operating MAOA enzyme. So uh, genetically, I am susceptible to um, low serotonin, I'm not going to say depression, but low serotonin that... Oh yeah, the methylene blue most definitely does uplift and help with that MAO inhibition, which keeps serotonin longer in my brain, alongside dopamine as well. So I definitely see the neurotransmitter benefits alongside the oxygenation benefits on the mitochondria. And, you know, again, yeah. to go back to what I said previously, mitochondria make serotonin and dopamine, they make neurotransmitters. So you've got Efficiency in creating the neurotransmitters and then efficiency in keeping them in the synapse or reuptake for, uh, you know, another synaptic transmission. Yeah. Scientifically, it was shown that uh, methylene blue, in particular medical conditions, can cause serotonin syndrome at 200 milligrams intravenously upwards. But even depending <laughs> on the medical condition, serotonin syndrome might happen or might not happen. So again, if you keep the dose moderate, I think you can get all the benefits regarding serotonin, serotonergic and dopaminergic effects. And if you go to 200 milligrams, which again, there will be guys out there that will go crazy high dose. Like there's guys out there that take 50 milligrams. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 times the dose that we recommend. Like, are you going to, well, of course people take a gram of train also. I mean, I've been there. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, and then, so I wonder why you're on the floor salivating and feeling hot to the touch, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's so silly, dude. Yeah, I think it's a very versatile compound that needs to be respected. Right? Low dose just go a very long way. And if, if you go on the Dr. Dean stack with Mod C and SLU, then, then a low dose is, you know, for the mitochondrial function, is, it's game changing, honestly, you know? And it, it saves you money on, on Mod C and SLU because people complain that they need to ramp up the dose of SLU to a gram. No, no, no dummy. Just add in a little bit of methylene blue and then you get the synergistic effect. I need five milligrams Mod C. No, 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 no. One milligram. <laughs> it's a shame. It sucks for my affiliate sales because I'd rather have people use more, but I have to keep it real with the audience. You know, less is more if you stack it together. Like Dean. It's now known as a Dr. Dean stack. You can't go back. No, I, I should have invested shares in SLU years ago <laughs> yeah, with this yeah. future prediction. <laughs> hey, man, you introduced something at least uh, it mm. should be named after you. Mm. We'll, we'll, 